Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 32. It's on chemical change. If you were to take your mass every night before you go to bed and when you wake up, you'd find that on average you're going to lose about a half a pound of mass every night. Where does that mass go? Well, you're going to lose some of it physically. You're going to evaporate some of that water off the surface of your skin and so we're going to just change that water that's a liquid into a water that's a gas. So that'd be a physical change. But we're also going to have a lot of chemical changes going on. In other words, you're taking in food and oxygen. There's going to be a chemical, a series of chemical reactions going on called cellular respiration. And then you're going to breathe out water and carbon dioxide. And so you're losing mass every time you breathe out. And so there's an excellent Veritasium video that talks about this. And I'll put a link in the video description down below. But this video is about chemical change. And so change that we see in the laboratory, remember, is change that we're observing at the macroscopic level or at the very big level. So we can't really see the particulates. We can't see the atoms and the bonds as they break and reform. And so we kind of have to infer that through laboratory work. And so changes can either be chemical or physical in nature. If we have a chemical change, what we're doing is forming a new substance. In other words, we're breaking bonds, forming new bonds, and so we're creating something that wasn't there before. In other words, at the particulate level, we're creating a new substance. In a physical change, we still have the same substance we had before. It's simply just in a new form. And so example of a chemical change would be converting that food into carbon dioxide and water. Um, a physical change might be taking that water and turning it into water vapor. And so what's some evidence that we can collect that would show that a chemical change is occurring? In other words, macroscopic evidence. Well, we might start to see a change in the odor, or we might see a change in the color. Perhaps we could have production of a gas. We might have change in heat, or we might have a change in the precipitate or the formation of a solid. What kind of evidence are we going to see that a physical change has occurred? It's simply going to be a change in the state. And so in the laboratory, what we're going to do is collect macroscopic data and then try to take that to interpret what's going on at the particulate level. And it's hard. We have to gather a lot of evidence. And sometimes we'll figure out it's chemical. Sometimes it's physical change. And sometimes we don't know. It's just ambiguous. And so again, chemical change, this is going to be our evidence. If we see an increase in the gas or odor or heat or color or precipitate, we know a chemical change has occurred, but if it's simply a change of state, it's physical. And so let me give you these examples. You may want to pause the video at this point and try to figure out which of these are going to be chemical changes and which of these are going to be physical changes. So let's start with rotting fruit. Rotting fruit, do we have production of gas? Maybe, do we get a change of color for sure? Is it easy to go from rotting fruit back to fruit? Not really. And so what would we call that? That would be a chemical change. Let's say we're rusting uh, iron or rusting a metal. What's that going to be? We would call that a chemical change. What's some evidence? I would see a change in color. When you rust things, you're actually going to see a change in heat as well. And it's hard to reverse that, so that'd be a chemical change. Let's say we take a pill of aspirin and we crush it up. Would that be chemical or physical? Well, I don't see change in color or heat or odor or no gas being produced. And so that's going to be a physical change. What about burning paper? What are we doing? We're actually combining it with oxygen. It'd be hard to go back to paper again, and so I would call that a chemical change. What about boiling water? We're adding heat to it, but the reaction is not generating heat, and so we would call that a physical change. This is a hard one. What about dissolving sugar in water? Well, when we dissolve the sugar in the water, it's still sugar inside the water. It simply separated all those sugar molecules, and so we call that a physical change. What about melting butter? That would also be a physical change. It's still butter, we're just changing the form. It's now in a liquid. If we were to burn it, it's combining with oxygen, so we'd call it a chemical. And so what are some chemical changes that you should get used to uh, measuring in the laboratory? One would be acid-base changes. And so this is a wonderful picture here. What we're doing is taking just cabbage juice, red cabbage juice, and we're adding different pH of a, of a substance to it, and you can get color change here. And so that's color change is going to indicate that we'd have chemical change as well. What would be another one? Formation of a precipitate or formation of a solid would be indication that we have a chemical change. And then redox reactions. This right here is going to be a titration or a redox titration. There's going to be other changes that we can see. It could either be an acid-base titration where we're seeing a color change based on an indicator, or it could just be the reduction of a substance that causing that color change.
And so again, did you learn the following to evaluate macroscopic, in other words, at the large level changes, and then classify them as physical, chemical, or I don't know. Well, the big things are to look at evidence for chemical change, and I hope that was helpful.